you know, if yeah. even the suspicion arises that people are not telling the truth because they're paid to, they're being paid to lie. The, I think right. that's an incredibly cruel. I don't think I know because I just exited 30 years in that business. That's very corrosive. So I hope that that is not happening in any widespread way. And I hope that it ends because I, I mean, more than anything, I, I would much rather be wrong. I have been wrong a million times, including about big things, but I don't want to be dishonest and I don't want to be seen as dishonest. I both for my own reasons of integrity, but also because that like, why would anyone watch you if you're a liar? Like no one wants to watch a liar. It's not worth your time. That's why I stopped right. reading the New York Times. I don't want it in my head. I don't know what's a lie and what's not. Just get away from me. Why does it feel like the world is unraveling? Tucker Carlson offers a piercing look into the chaos, corruption, and moral decay gripping our society today. In this must-watch video, Tucker exposes the ugly truth behind modern media's race to the bottom, where dishonesty is rewarded and truth is sacrificed for profit. Reflecting on his decades in the industry, he warns of the devastating consequences when public trust and in information collapses. The conversation takes a darker turn as Tucker shines a light on the unchecked power of Washington elites, whose obsession with foreign entanglements and endless wars comes at the expense of solving America's real problems. Drawing disturbing parallels to the collapse of ancient empires, he outlines the eerie similarities between Rome's fall and the self-inflicted decline of modern Western powers, like Britain, Canada, and even the United States. But this isn't just about politics. Tucker dives deep into the spiritual battle at play, a timeless clash between good and evil shaping the fate of civilizations. Are we witnessing the end of an era? Or are these the warning signs we need to spark a renaissance of truth and integrity? This is more than a critique. It's a wake-up call for anyone paying attention. Don't miss Tucker Carlson's most unfiltered and thought-provoking breakdown yet. I just think it's important to keep in mind that purity of spirit is detectable yeah. by others. People know who's being honest, who's saying something because, you know, I really believe this. That's why I'm saying it. And I think people can feel that. And don't don't take a dark path like there's enough money in this country. You don't you know, you don't yeah. need to destroy yourself and your credibility for 50 grand. Like that's not a good trade for you or anyone else, I don't think. It's not even about the people. It's I am very concerned that the people who have hated Trump for eight years and run out of ways to destroy him, indicting him, well, first calling him a racist, spying on him with the federal intel agencies, sicking the FBI on him, trying to put him in prison at least twice, probably more, um, actually, but at least twice. And um, so I've been pretty fixated on that for, for months, probably more than a year. I've just thought a lot about it. And I know a lot of the people involved and they're very, very, very focused on war. Permanent Washington doesn't care about domestic policy in case, in case your viewers, I'm sure know this, but just want to restate it. They don't care about domestic policy. They don't care about fixing the country. They don't care about that. What they care about is exercising power abroad. And that's where the money is, trillions of dollars. So they care about foreign policy. The complicity of Western European countries in this really, I hope books are written about it, but there's something about a dying empire, you know, collapsing demographically, totally pointless finance-based economy, um, no self-respect at all, nihilism rising. There's something about that mix, the final days of a dying civilization it's, it's really the darkest thing I could, it's just like you, you imagine Rome collapsing and, you know, the vandals toppling buildings and, you know, really it's, the end of an empire is more like a kind of suicide, a kind of murder suicide where, you know, the formerly great power kills itself and then takes a lot of people out as it does. It, it's like more horrifying than I ever thought, you know, reading about the end of Rome. Um, and I'm, I think it's probably pretty consistent over time you know, there's like deep stuff going on here that I don't, uh, trust me, I do not pretend to understand all of this stuff, but like the behavior of France and particularly Great Britain, which itself has become totalitarian, where lots of Britons, native born Britons are in prison for posting social media opinions and they're in jail for that. Like that's not a free country, right. it's a totalitarian country. Same with Canada, same with New Zealand, same with Australia. It's like, what the hell is going on? It'll be hundreds of years before some wise person can assess what happened to the English-speaking world 
you know, 20 years into the 21st century. But all at once they decided to kill themselves and a lot of other people on the way out. It's really amazing. There's a war um, in the unseen world between light and darkness, good and bad. It's been described by every civilization since the beginning of time. So I think we can assume it's real. And you do see that, you know, expressions of good, manifestations of good are sometimes followed and vice versa by outbursts of evil.